Um, we have our started face, um, and then we got a head and neck that we're gonna put it on. And so we have to make sure that it's one, first and foremost, most important, is that it's stable. Okay, stability is the key. And, um, <clears throat> cause if it's like a little bit too big, but more stable, no big deal because you can always just carve it back more. Okay. Sorry guys, I was trying to get this. There we go. Uh, you can always carve back more, but you would not want to like have to add little bits of clay unless you really had to. Okay. Um, and so basically you're just like starting with like a mound and then you, I just like to kind of like form it with my hands. Uh, but before I get too far with it, um, I just want to make sure like I look at it and it feels like it's generally proportionate. Okay. And so I start with just like a basic mound. It doesn't really look like much. Okay. And I would encourage you to use references in the beginning, you know, unless I'm making it someone in, in particular, I'm not going to use references because I've just done this a lot of times. Uh, I just kind of round out the chest because I know that the chest kind of comes down, right? Where like the collarbones are here. Okay. And then the chest rounds its way down. So I just get that little roundness in there. And then the back, I want to get the back sort of <clears throat> kind of like where the shoulders, where the, where the spine is here, and then the shoulders kind of angle at, or sort of like jog, them, jog themselves out a little bit. You know how like your shoulder blades are sort of uh, extended more than your, um, than like where your spine is. It, it kind of like depresses in where your spine is a little bit. And then I just like to form sort of upwards with my hands, a neck, a general neck. Now you wanna think about, especially from the side, the neck isn't a column or a, or a cylinder that just goes straight up, okay? It actually, so your, your spine sort of curves itself. So the spine isn't straight either. The spine is like a curve. It goes like more like this. It's like a backward C. And so the backward C of the spine from like this point kind of curves like this and then up into the head like that. Okay. So the neck actually comes forward slightly when looking at it from a back view. And I'm not gonna do any kind of like real details and stuff at the moment. I'm just kind of trying to move it around and just remembering the simple, the real simple things like my neck shouldn't go straight up, it should come forward slightly, okay? And the front of the neck, of course, will take a similar angle. It'll slightly angle this way, slightly. Not a ton, but slightly. And then I just try to sort of get in a little bit of shoulder kind of anatomy type stuff while my clay is nice and malleable, uh, but I'm not gonna go too far or do too much until I have like my references of, of who I'm sculpting and I'm really trying to customize it. Okay. <clears throat> I try not to pull clay off in the beginning unless I feel like I just have way too much clay. And then I will. My guy's a little bit sticky here still. Unbelievable. I can't believe that clay is still sticky. Uh, but do think about where the collarbones will be, where the chest will be, where those things. I mean, you can start to sort of sculpt them in, in a very general sense, very general, very, very, very general. Um, just so it starts to feel a little bit more 
whole or together or anatomical. But very, very general. Um, the main thing is that we have from the top view, we have like where the spine goes and then the shoulder blades come up slightly. That's really important, right? So it just comes up a little bit here, okay? From a side view that the neck sort of does this opposite C curve like this, okay? And then from the front, it just sort of tries to match that curve. All right, and then as you go, you can kind of fit your, fit your guy on there. And remember, we want it to be a little bit bigger than we actually are going to have it be, right? We're going to make it so that we have some space to carve stuff off, okay? And so to me, these shoulders and neck is just a little bit, I mean, it's a little big compared to my head. It is. Um, and so what do I want to do about that? Well, you know, I'll step back from it, take a look at it. He's, he's looking kind of a little bit like, uh, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger with these gigantic shoulders and neck or something. Well, if that's the case, I'll, I'll stretch the neck a little bit, right? I'll pull the shoulders down a little bit. And if I have to, then I'll just take some, take some clay out of there. But um, I try to, in general, take clay out later. But if I have to, like I'll just take a tool like this and I'll just kind of remove a chunk, right? And then I'll go back and reshape that. And so, yeah, just think about like how, all right, <clears throat> so anatomically, the way that shoulders, neck, chest are all formed, okay? So there's like a collarbone that goes here. So we wanna kinda like form the collarbone by pressing here, okay? And then sort of shaping from above and below like that. And then there's a muscle from the neck that transitions its way down and meets the collarbone on top of the shoulder, like there. And so that's a nice little smooth transition there. And then you sort of have this little gap inside. And then the neck also comes down into that space there. So you just wanna create that little triangle space there, even if it's not exactly the size or shape that it's gonna wind up being, okay? And then same thing over here, we would push from above and below just to get a basic collarbone formed. Okay, form the side of the neck here and then form that trapezius muscle. So I get that little triangle going here. And there we go. And so just get a basic, right? Start to try to build your anatomy. Make sure whatever you do to one side, you do to the other so it's symmetrical. Um, and from time to time, fit your head on there to make sure that it's looking good, proportionate. Okay, that's starting to get there. It's not looking back, bad from the front view. I'll show you guys. So the neck looks a little bit big, but I'm always I'm going to leave the neck a little bit bigger than I want it to be for stability purposes. In the beginning, uh, you don't want a tiny little neck and have it be real floppy. Okay, so make the, the neck a little bit bulkier in the beginning. Okay. The width 
should be about two head lengths like this. So one head to the center, a second head to the other shoulder, that's about right. If it's a man, a little bit thinner for a woman. Okay. Um, and so I'm feeling pretty good about this general shoulder and neck formation. <clears throat> you know, I got my back going a little bit. I'm not overly concerned with any sort of detailing or whatever. I just want the basic anatomy to feel right. Uh, but now I'm going to let this chill, right? I'm going to let this rest. And I'm not, before I put it on, I'm going to do a little, I'm going to do a little carve out on the neck. I'll show you this, this move I do for the neck. Um, I'm going to do a little carve out on the neck before I, you know, seat the head on there and also put an armature in there. But while my <clears throat> shoulders and neck are formed how I want them decently. I'm going to let them chill, let them stiffen up a little bit, right? Because we do want our base to be sturdy. And I'm going to add the features onto the head. All right. Uh, so first things first will be our nose. And so I'll roll up a larger sphere. Are you guys still? Oh my, why didn't anybody say anything? I'm sorry. Guys, if my camera gets screwed up and you can't see, you gotta like yell at me. I just realized. Um, here. Why don't I do this? This will be better. How's that? Are you guys still with me? Yeah, all right. Guys, if, if that happens, like, and I'm talking, be like, yo, Mr. K. Stop. We can't see anything. Like very important that you that you alert me to that so that so I can tell what's going on. All right. And so I'll roll up a little sphere for the nose. And of course when I press it on there, it's gonna look a little ridiculous, right? But I'm gonna shape that on. <clears throat> And I try to work with my hands as much as I possibly can. So I'm gonna blend down the bottom of it, blend down the sides of it, and then shape the bridge of my nose with that clay. And I'm gonna leave the tip of the nose, you know, kind of round like that sphere. Just like we did with the modeling clay. Okay, check the side view, make sure it's the shape that you want it to be. Don't worry about getting everything perfectly smooth and whatever else. That is for later with little tiny tools, paintbrushes, etc. Okay, and so all noses have different shapes. Make it whatever shape that you want it to be. Okay, check it from the side, check it from the front. <clears throat> Good. Then I'll take two small spheres for the nostrils. Just roll them up, make sure they're the same. If they're not, take the time to make sure they're the same. Okay, stick them on like that. Smooth them. See, I like working larger because I can use my hands a lot more and uh, I just feel like I have more control with my hands. So smooth them up, keep them round, shape them in, you know, make it thinner, make it thicker, whatever you want, whatever works for you. Use a tool where you need to. I actually want the smaller one.
Okay. I usually like to make sure that the base of the nose is kind of flat like that. I like to take a tool to just get the base of the nose all, all good. Of course, it all depends on the shape of your nose, but in general, I like, I like to put that in there. And this is all gonna get built up here with uh, the mouth clay anyway, so don't worry about making this too perfect underneath here. And then I like to just, once I have my nose formed, and my nostrils formed and it feels good. I just go in and I kind of open up a little, little nostril. Or something like that. There we go. Okay, and while the clay is really wet, you just leave it as is. All right, so then I go into the mouth. <clears throat> of course, you know, always as you're working, go back and keep on reshaping and doing your moves, right? To shape the forehead, to shape the cheeks, to shape everything, shape the overall head, still squeeze it. Um, of course, this is all going to be hollowed out, guys. And so um, because it's going to get hollowed out, um, you want to get all of your features and everything good to go before you go into the hollowing process. And we're going to keep it wet. <clears throat> you know, check it from the side, make sure everything's good. Okay. And so now I'm going to roll up a ball. A little bit bigger than than the nose clay. I'm gonna smush it down and make it into sort of a sort of an oval pancake kind of situation here. So then spread it out sideways, spread it out down, and then attach it up under the nose. So now you have this nice little mound of clay to work with. Always remember your proportions, right? Remember those proportions that we studied. But you basically just want like, kind of like this, like just like a sort of a muzzle looking type thing of clay. And then we'll do the old mouth move here. <clears throat> Remember that the mouth line is approximately halfway between chin and nose line. Maybe a little bit higher than halfway, so about there. All right, and here we go. So I dig it in, and I roll it out to the corner of the mouth about here. And I roll it out to the corner of the mouth about there. There we go. And you really help yourself out if you have like um, the ball that you rolled and the shape that you made if it's symmetrical. And so then I go in and then press it up. Press it up and press it up. Right there. That's it. Top lip just gets kind of like pressed up on an angle like that and then we'll deal with the upper lip later. And then bottom lip I'm in and I roll it down, into the corner, roll it down, and into the corner, roll it down. And what that does is that kind of creates this excess clay here that I like to pull down 
and then I use that excess clay to start to build the chin. Because I'm going to need clay for the chin. And you can go and shape it. And there we go. So those are the basic lip moves. And if you can learn to keep it to those three moves, really, if you can learn to keep it to those three moves, you'll be in great shape. If you got to go in and keep on fiddling with it, that's when it gets tough. Sometimes the less fiddling, the better. Now I can roll down, back around from my cheekbones, get into the temple, roll up on the forehead, you know, always kind of like try to work the whole thing and check it from the side, make sure the side looks good. Okay. And so then I create <clears throat> my Cupid's bow. So I go right in here and I roll out both directions, just like that. And then I take from the nostril and sweep it, sweep it down to the corner, bam. And then I smooth it out. And then I take it from the nostril and sweep it down to the corner. And then I smooth it out. And I just go back in and do any little touch-ups that got screwed up in that process. And of course, you're gonna to wanna to customize it to the mouth of whoever it is that you're sculpting but use those moves and you will be in great shape. Remember to roll. And so there's the mouth. I'll go in and clean up all that little stuff. You know, the no, uh, that was stupid. Um, how the nose transitions in the Cupid's bow and stuff. I'll do that later with little tools, um, but that's the basic mouth, okay? And we just look at the chin and, and check out the formation of the jaw from underneath and the chin. And I wanna like do like a little bit of pressing the jaw into what would be sort of like a triangle type shape to get to the corner of the jaw here. <clears throat> So I'm just pressing forward and moving it into that shape. And if I need to add clay, then I will. And I usually always wind up adding clay for the chin as well. And so do the same thing. Take a little ball of clay. <clears throat> Flatten it out, shape it. Kind of like squeeze out the edges so it blends a little smoother. Add that little extra clay. Okay. Um, I usually save the eyes and the hair and the ears for after it's connected. I just like to get it here so that while I can hold it in my hands, it's a little bit easier. Okay, so as far as the features go, I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, check it from the front, check it from the side. And now I'm going to connect to my head or to my shoulders. Okay. So let's bring the shoulders back into the picture. <clears throat> okay, um, so if we look at the shoulders, again, we want from the top, we want a little bit of a depression here where the spine is. 
and then the shoulder blades to be just up a little bit on the back side. From the front side, we want the neck, of course, from the side view to be leaning slightly forward. And then we want um, collarbones, the trapezius, the transition from the neck to the shoulders to create this little triangle here to have this little space in there. And then we just got to shape our neck. Okay, the chest kind of comes down from the collarbones. All right, and so then we look at it, we place it on there, we take a look, and it just feels a little bit bulky in the neck, right? The neck just seems long and it seems big and there's extra clay. Well, we want some extra clay, but there may be, you know, an appropriate level of extra clay. So I'm just gonna take off on, on the angle that I want it to be in also. That little bit of clay there. Now I can reshape and reform. Okay, and we're going to need the head to sit into the neck. I'm going to leave this extra bulk. I know that like these air, this area is too much and in general, but a lot of this clay, I'm going to pull up and transition into the head. All right. And so I'm going to do this little move right here and try to get it so you guys can see. I'm going to take a scoop like this. So now my chin can sort of sit protruding out from the neck and I have all this clay in the back to transition up and remove. Okay, remember, all of this clay, including on the head, neck and shoulders, or on the neck and shoulders, can be removed. Okay, I just wanna make sure my proportions are generally there and I got enough clay that I can pull clay off and I can attach. All right, so then you're gonna take something. Um, I have this, you have popsicle sticks and other things. Um, I just don't have any popsicle sticks. And basically we wanna create sort of an armature where this thing is gonna stay as close to put as possible. And so I'm gonna stick the armature down into the head and into the shoulders and neck like all the way, and then I'm gonna stick it up into the head. And so first I just wanna see like basically where I'm gonna have that be on the head. So it's about there, okay? And then where it's gonna be on the neck and shoulders, about there. And so first I wanna put it up into the head And I wanna go like towards like the center of the head where the meat of the head is. Okay. So I put a good amount, you know, it's probably up, up into there. And then I'm just gonna let it lower its way down. And there we go. Okay, so now I at least don't have to worry about it tumbling off. It's not perfect, okay, but it's better than nothing. And now I gotta use the clay to support. And so I'm gonna take, right now, I'm just gonna transition up all this clay up into the head. And I know it's not gonna look right. I don't want it to look right. I don't care about it looking right. I'm gonna go back and fix all this. But I left that extra clay so that I could create this like sort of collar of support. And it's going to go all the way around the head. Looks like he's wearing a turtleneck or something. That's fine. <clears throat> this is just until this clay starts to get a little bit stiffer. And then I can go in and I can shape it much better. I just want to feel confident 
that my guy is not going to fall over. Okay, if I have to, if it's feeling, if it's feeling like it's wanting to fall forward, then go like this. Get yourself a little chunk of clay, press it down, get another one of your tools or anything, it doesn't really matter. Like this and support it however you need it to be supported. Okay, and then just give it a little air and give it a little bit of time to get itself back, to get itself a little bit stronger. Okay. And that's where I'm going to stop demonstrating. So uh, I don't know what time it is here, guys. We're probably, we've done a lot today. Yeah, we're, we're right at the end. Um, so thank you for your time and your attention.